I have had people that work at Area 51 confirm parts of Bob's story. One in particular saw him coming off the jet, or he says he saw him coming off the Janet flights. I said, will you go on record with me that you met Bob there on the tarmac? What if we told you that Area 51 isn't the only thing that the US government has been hiding from the world? Some of the most sinister things are happening behind closed doors, but there is one secret that not a single soul has known about for the last 80 years. Finally, things have come to light. So join us as we explore the secrets that were leaked from the US authorities, all of which will leave you shocked for days. The Stonehenge Mystery is a famous prehistoric monument that you'll find in Wiltshire, England. You've probably seen pictures of those massive stones arranged in a circle, and they're quite the sight to behold. But what do they really mean? Some of them weigh over 25 tons and stand over 13 feet tall. But as soon as it was discovered, questions emerged over who built Stonehenge or how they did it. Some scientists speculated that it had been standing there for about 5,000 years, but the details of its construction remained a mystery. Archaeologists dug around for clues, but they were left scratching their heads for quite a long while. Soon, though, the deeper story beneath Stonehenge started to become clearer. The Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes Project was conducted between 2010 and 2014, and it used the best technology to show that Stonehenge is way more than what the world thinks it is. When the underground imaging was finally revealed, what emerged was a massive landscape that was covered with burial mounds, settlements, and ceremonial roots. But what did this revelation mean? Well, a Neolithic world that was far more intricate than previously imagined. One crucial discovery was made at Durrington Walls, a site right in front of Stonehenge. At first, they came across a massive stone circle that seemed like a very good breakthrough, and they soon named it Superhenge. But with further excavation, it became clear that these stones were actually timber posts. Despite the disappointment, though, the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes Project brought some invaluable insights into the world. Lead researcher Vincent Gaffney mentioned how their efforts revealed hundreds of new features, including a colossal ring of posts, possibly serving a ceremonial or symbolic purpose. Another very crucial revelation from this project was that Stonehenge was built in two separate phases, and the earliest phase dates back to over 4,500 years ago. This timeline showed that the area held significance long before Stonehenge's construction, with evidence of occupation dating back thousands of years. At this point, researchers believe that Stonehenge became a unifying symbol, bridging different regions and peoples. The transportation of stones from Wales to Salisbury Plain was probably a symbolic act, which probably represented unity among Neolithic communities. But there was one big question that continued to bother researchers. How were these massive stones transported over long distances? Contrary to earlier theories of glacial transportation, recent excavations in Wales uncovered ancient quarries, confirming human involvement in the procurement and transport of the stone. Experimental archaeology has shown that moving smaller megaliths like bluestones was pretty doable for people at the time using simple techniques. This challenged previous assumptions about the difficulty of stone transport. Interestingly, the most recent excavations at Stonehenge have unearthed cremated human remains, and with them, the meaning of the whole place has shifted. As time goes on, Stonehenge continues to reveal new surprises. One wonders. Do powers like the U.S. know more about Stonehenge than they're revealing? Or have they already found out the true meaning behind Stonehenge and simply consider it too dangerous for the public to know? Well, you'll get the sense of it with the next big secret reveal. The Beale Ciphers Imagine a treasure that's worth millions of dollars, buried deep in Virginia. To this day, it has never been found, but what's stopping people from rushing to it? It's hidden by a series of cryptic codes that are beyond the understanding of even the greatest experts out there. But when did this mystery truly begin? Back in 1885, a pamphlet came out detailing the exploits of a man named Thomas J. Beale. According to the pamphlet, Beale unearthed huge amounts of riches in New Mexico and buried the treasure in Virginia. But then, he encrypted its whereabouts using intricate ciphers. However, not everyone was unaware of what was happening. Beale gave the key to solving these puzzles to an innkeeper named Robert Morris, along with strict instructions not to open the box for at least 10 years. When Beale failed to come back, Morris took a crack at the ciphers, managing to decipher one using the Declaration of Independence as a guide. And what did it say? Well, the deciphered text revealed the location of the treasure, 
flaunting a massive haul of gold, silver, and jewels. But the remaining ciphers, which supposedly talk about the treasure's contents and beneficiaries, remain unsolved to this day. Despite numerous attempts by enthusiasts and cryptographers alike, the other two ciphers have been impossible to decode. Some have speculated that the ciphers might be nothing more than random numbers, but there's still that lingering belief that maybe this treasure does actually exist out there. As for Thomas Beale himself, his identity is completely unknown. People have combed through historical records, but no evidence has surfaced about this man's existence. Some even mentioned that Edgar Allan Poe or Thomas Jefferson could be behind the tale, but without solid proof, it's all speculation. In modern times, groups and online communities have been working together in a collective effort to crack the codes. But despite their best efforts, the treasure remains unknown to this world, and the hope of solving the mystery dwindles with each passing year. But if the Beale ciphers confuse you, let's talk about the one mystery that has remained with us ever since we were kids. The Bermuda Triangle. You probably know of this as the spot in the ocean where ships and planes have vanished into thin air. It's located in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and San Juan. The triangle is so massive that it covers about 700,000 square kilometers. Sure, ships and planes pass through it all the time, but do you know what the Bermuda Triangle does to some of them? It swallows them whole. Over the past century, this triangle has claimed over 50 ships and 20 planes. After every disappearance, there are no answers as to where they really went. While accidents can happen almost everywhere, it's the frequency and mystery of these disappearances that have really left people confused. One theory suggests that the Bermuda Triangle is hiding the lost city of Atlantis, the one that disappeared ages ago. On the other hand, some people even believe that aliens are behind all the disturbances in the area. But most scientists claim that there are much more believable explanations for whatever goes on in the Bermuda Triangle. According to Australian scientist Carl Krusselnicki and the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, there might not be anything supernatural about it at all. Instead, they argue that the disappearances boil down to plain old probabilities. Both Krusselnicki and Noah have been saying this for years. They claim that the Bermuda Triangle mystery is nothing but a statistical quirk. So according to them, the Bermuda Triangle sees its fair share of vanishing vessels simply because it's a busy and notoriously tricky area to navigate. In 2010, Noah proclaimed that there is no evidence that mysterious disappearances occur with any greater frequency in the Bermuda Triangle than in any other large, well-traveled area of the ocean. Krusselnicki has been echoing this statement since 2017, focusing on the fact that the number of incidents in the Bermuda Triangle is no higher than anywhere else in the world. But then, what's the logical explanation for all of the disappearances that happen in the Bermuda Triangle? According to Noah, environmental factors hold the answers. They blame the unpredictable nature of the Gulf Stream, the network of Caribbean islands, and even the Bermuda Triangle's magnetic anomalies, which can throw off compasses. Let's say one believes what they're saying. How do you then explain Flight 19? This was a squadron of five U.S. Navy bombers that vanished without a trace in 1945, and to this day, this has remained an unsolved mystery. But Krusselnicki argues that even in such high-profile cases, the culprit is often nothing more than bad weather, human error, or a lethal combination of both. From 2017 to 2023, Krusselnicki has been a vocal advocate for debunking the Bermuda Triangle myth. But one ends up wondering, is he just another tool that the US government is using to keep the truth away from the rest of the world? If you're not convinced about the American government playing a part in this, wait till you see the next big secret. The Mystery of Cleopatra's Tomb Born in Alexandria in 69 BC, Cleopatra wasn't originally Egyptian by blood. Instead, she hailed from the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was started by one of Alexander the Great's generals. But what sets her apart is that she fully embraced Egyptian culture and even learned to speak their language fluently. However, the one thing that made Cleopatra famous was her love life. Clearly, she had a thing for powerful Roman generals like Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, and their romances kept folks entertained throughout the course of history. But after she died, her resting place became the biggest mystery of this era. There were no records found that actually mentioned where she was buried, and the landscapes had changed so massively over the last two millennia 
that it was impossible to guess where she had been. In recent years, however, archaeologists have gotten very close to a breakthrough. At Taposiris Magna, a temple nestled on the Nile Delta, archaeologists stumbled upon two mummies that dated back to Cleopatra's time. They were just there, lying undisturbed for over 2,000 years. But even then, these mummies aren't exactly in pristine condition. Water seepage into the tomb has left them in a sorry state, and you can probably imagine how hard it must be to identify these mummies correctly. But what's the evidence for these mummies being connected to Cleopatra? Archaeologists have uncovered some pretty compelling clues linking these mummies to Cleopatra because these high-status individuals were found adorned with luxurious gold leaves. This was a clear sign of elite status back in the day, and experts are even assuming that these people might have rubbed shoulders with Cleopatra herself. X-rays of the mummies have revealed that one is male and the other female, and if that wasn't intriguing enough, the temple altar held a treasure trove of 200 coins bearing Cleopatra's name and likeness. But what does it all really mean? Could these mummies finally lead the way to Cleopatra's tomb? And even if they do, will the US government really let that happen? Well, you're about to see just how worse things can get. The Sodder Family Nightmare Everything went down on Christmas Eve of 1945, when the Sodder family, settled in Fayetteville, West Virginia, faced the worst possible thing they could fall into. A fire broke out in their home, and while some of them managed to escape, five of the Sodder kids were nowhere to be found. The fire started around 1.30 a.m., and George and Jenny, the parents, woke up to hear the sounds of breaking glass and the smell of smoke. They hurried out of their room to get everyone out, and successfully, they managed to save four of their kids. But here's the thing, there were more kids, all of whom were nowhere to be found. In the end, despite the fire department's efforts, the house was razed to the ground, and the missing children were never seen again. The whole town tried everything they could to find them, but there wasn't a single trace of them found in that area. Naturally, George and Jenny didn't want to give up hope, so they launched their own search efforts. They began plastering posters all over town, hoping for any lead. But no matter how hard they tried, their kids remained missing. Fast forward to 1967, Jenny got a mysterious letter with a photo that looked almost exactly like one of her missing sons, Louis. It came all the way from Kentucky, but there was no return address. Jenny's hopes went up, but the trail went cold when authorities weren't able to trace the guy in the photo. But there were many other clues that pointed toward the possibility that the kids were still alive. On the night of the fire, a witness saw a car speeding away from the solder house, but nobody was able to identify it. Then there was Buster, the family dog, who actually survived the fire, but nobody's been able to explain how he did it. Some think he could have sniffed out clues, but how would a poor dog be able to communicate secrets, even if he knows any? So what happened to the Sodder kids? Some theories suggest that they perished in the fire, but there's no solid evidence for that. Others think they were snatched, especially with the clues including the mysterious letter and the fleeing car. And then there's the wild theory that they ran away, but why would they even want to leave everything behind? Now, here's where an important twist comes in. Just a day before the fire, an insurance agent had an intense argument with George Sauter about Benito Mussolini, the Italian dictator. After that, a stranger showed up at their place, warning about faulty wiring in the house. At the time, George brushed it off. But after the fire, the investigation blamed faulty wiring for the blaze. Guess who was part of that investigation? Well, the same insurance agent. Could it all be a coincidence? Maybe but it's left a lot of room for speculation, especially when it comes to the very real possibility of foul play. Speaking of foul play, the Sauter family mystery is nothing compared to the next one, the Boeing 747 disappearance. On March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 747 took off from Kuala Lumpur and was headed for Beijing. But then, just 40 minutes into the flight, all communication with the pilot went dead. There were no distress signals and no warning signs, only silence from the plane. But that's not even the creepiest part of the story. Even after disappearing from the radar, the plane kept flying for another seven hours. Now you'd think experienced pilots would try to turn back if something went wrong, right? Well, not this time. It's like the plane vanished on purpose, and it was nearly impossible to find it. A whole search and rescue mission began from there on, where experts looked through the South China Sea, the Malacca Strait, and even parts of the Indian Ocean near Australia. 
But despite all of these efforts, nothing important turned up. It was a dead end, and most people had accepted it at that point. That was until 2015 and 2016 when pieces of the missing plane started washing up on the shores. Fragments of the plane were found on islands like Reunion and Rodriguez, as well as along the coasts of Mozambique and South Africa. Every one of these discoveries added to the mystery of the plane, but nothing was about to be resolved. Eventually, it was confirmed that the plane crashed, and all people aboard died. But why? Well, there still exists no answer to that question. One theory has suggested foul play, considering the possibility that maybe terrorists hijacked the plane. On the other hand, maybe the pilot, Zahari Ahmad Shah, had something to do with it. This theory emerged after a flight simulator with unusual flight paths was found in his home. However, with no definite answer, it's still a mystery what really happened to that plane. But Shaw wasn't the only pilot that left the world in shock. Amelia Earhart's disappearance. Earhart was born back in 1897 in Kansas, and right from the beginning, she shook up the skies. Being a female aviator back then was a very big deal, and even her own family thought that wanting to soar the skies wasn't very smart for her. But Amelia wasn't one to back down from a challenge. She didn't just break barriers, she shattered them all as she zoomed across the Atlantic Ocean completely on her own. This made her the first female pilot to pull off such a massive feat. Now, here's where things shifted. In 1937, Amelia set her sights on a global flight adventure with her navigator, Fred Noonan. They hopped into their twin-engine Lockheed Electra plane and went off from Oakland, California. Their mission was to circumnavigate the Earth and they traveled through 22,000 miles like it was no big deal. But things took a sharp turn when they hit Ley, New Guinea. Their next stop was Howland Island, which is a tiny speck in the Pacific Ocean. They ended up facing intensely cloudy skies, weird radio signals, and fuel running on fumes. In the end, Amelia and Fred never made it to Howland Island. This is when a frantic search began. It was the mother of all rescue missions, but despite combing the seas and skies, there was zero sign of the two fearless aviators. And just like that, Amelia was officially declared dead on January 5th, 1939. But what really went down? The official word was that they ran out of gas and crash landed into the ocean. But there's a lot more to the story. Some people believe that Amelia was on a super secret mission for the American government and was spying on Japanese islands. Others swear that she and Fred ended up on Nikumaroro, an uninhabited island where bits of their plane were found. However, the truth is still lost, and like every other suspicious disappearance, fingers always point toward a possible involvement of the American government. But then again, what's a bigger mystery than the next one we're going to talk about? The Collapse of the Maya Civilization The Maya were way ahead of their time when it came to things like math and astronomy. It was like they were doing rocket science before it was cool, and their calendar was so accurate that it even factored in long cycles like procession. But despite being light years ahead of their neighbors in terms of progress, one day, they just vanished without a trace. You'd think with all their smartness, they'd leave the world a roadmap to find out what happened, right? Well, that didn't happen, and instead, we're left piecing together clues from ancient graffiti, pottery, and a few scribbles here and there. But what were the Maya really like? Among many other things, they were interested in super creepy things like bloodletting and human sacrifices. Plus, they also had this wild ball game called Pock to Pock, where losers actually got axed for failing. Some think these rituals were all about pleasing the gods, while others consider it their way of thinning out the population. But what if it was something deeper? What if winning that ball game was their ticket to the afterlife? One thing that the Mayans were deeply interested in was recycling their temples. Some think this practice was a political power move, while others consider it to be all about cosmic alignment. So, what's really happened to the Maya? Did they vanish into thin air, or did they ascend to some cosmic world? More realistically, did they all unexpectedly get wiped out by a massive disaster? We may never know for sure, but one thing's for certain. Their story is one of the greatest mysteries of all time. But wait till you see what's coming next. The Secrets of Ancient Astrolabe The year was 1902 when a group of sponge divers off the coast of Antikythera came across something extraordinary. At first glance, it seemed like an ordinary piece of stone, but little did they know that they had stumbled upon an astrolabe. Now, what is that? Well, it's a complex device used by ancient navigators and astronomers. 
During the mid-20th century, English historian Derek J. DeSola Price came onto the scene. Armed with X-ray technology, he got right into the mysterious artifact, revealing its real purpose. The object was a sophisticated astronomical tool. It was so capable that it could track celestial bodies with remarkable precision, and nothing like this device had ever existed before. Let's break it down. The Anti-Kythera mechanism, seated within a wooden box, showed a complex assembly of gears and dials that were carefully arranged to track celestial time. But here's the thing. It wasn't just for decoration purposes. The Anti-Kythera was an interactive tool, and it came complete with instructions carved right into its sides. So what was its main job? It has been used in tracking stars and planets. Back in the day, people brought it to use to predict the positions of celestial bodies like Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. It could predict lunar and solar eclipses with mind-blowing accuracy, along with a whopping 42 other celestial events. This made it invaluable for crafting calendars and planning special occasions back in the day. The Lost City of Atlantis this island, which was first mentioned by the Greek philosopher Plato, has actually been the subject of debate for centuries. According to Plato's dialogues, Atlantis was a sophisticated civilization that was found beyond the Pillars of Hercules, situated near modern-day Morocco and Spain. The story talks about how a massive earthquake around 9500 BC sent Atlantis into the depths of the ocean in just one night. There was nothing left behind, only a few traces of what once was a mighty civilization. The most fascinating thing about Atlantis is its technological development. While the rest of the world was still using primitive tools for their work, the Atlanteans had already mastered advanced engineering. They were said to be building grand temples, expansive bridges, and fleets of ships that could scare the strongest nations away. Plato wasn't one to talk about false stories. He backed up his accounts by referencing earlier texts, which would make anyone believe that Atlantis was a real place. Over the years, scholars and adventurers have scoured every corner of the world as they try to find evidence of Atlantis's existence. Despite countless plans and the discovery of intriguing underwater ruins, none have actually proven to be the lost island. These findings only deepen the mystery and fuel endless speculation and quests for answers. Within all of these secrets, there is one common question. Are these secrets being kept from the world by the US authorities? Could these secrets be critical to the world's condition if they ever get revealed? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.